Okay, everyone. So now we are learning the execution process of .NET application. Whenever we are developing a .NET application, then we execute it. Now, in between that, what is the process going on? That is what we are learning here. Let's suppose that first of all we are having the user. Now, at this place, we are having the user, and we know that user write a code. So we are assuming that this is the source code. So this source code, if we talk about the C language, let's say, which is very basic. So user write a C program. That C program is called the source code. Now after that, in the Turbo C or the Dave C, any of the C compiler, we compile it, and afterward it is converted to the native code directly. Native code is nothing. It is the machine code that your machine understand. And what is the machine? Just like your Windows or the Linux. So any operating system which is installed. So here on right hand side we are having the operating system. So that means if you talk about a C language or the VB language, then user write the source code, and this source code is converted to the native code. So this source code, let's say, is our C program. and is converted to the machine code and it run on the operating system so that is the normal compilation process of the simple program but here we are having the dot net in the dot net we know that it is the two step compilation it is not that user is making the source code and the source code is directly converting to the native code no this is not happening in between we are having one more level so that is the byte code if you talk about the java the java also work like the dot net there are two compilation so that means first of all user write a code in the dot net this is called the source code now this source code is converted to the byte code first and this byte code is called the il in dot net il means intermediate language now this il is further compiled and converted to the native code and that work on the os that's why there are two compilation process so this is the compilation 1 and this is the compilation 2 so these are the two compilation process if we talk about the dot net java also work like the same so now let's understand how the execution process of dot net application work now let us assume that we are having the user and user is writing the source code here so in the source code level we know that there are multiple language supported by the dot net let's say we are having the c sharp maybe the vb dot net or maybe we are having the asp dot net so that's why i have mentioned other dot net languages so any of the language you are opting in the dot net you can take it so that code you are writing means let's say you are designing a form maybe if we are using a web application so you are let's say designing a form in the dot net and you have taken some buttons and the text boxes and done some coding behind that so that is your application so this application you have designed in the dot net maybe using c sharp vb j sharp any other language so you have taken now afterward you have done the coding this is called the source code so this is the first level where you have designed the source code now in the dot net there are multiple compilers so at the level 1 compiler there are multiple compilers available if you have designed the code in c sharp so there is a c sharp compiler will be active if you are designing into the vb dot net so the vb dot net compiler will be there if you are using any other language let's say you are having some j sharp or any other language so other compiler will be available means let's say i am using a c sharp so c sharp compiler will be active and my code which i am writing will be converted to the intermediate language and what is the intermediate language this is the intermediate which is in between so this is called the il now you can see that inside the box it is mentioned microsoft intermediate language so it is called msil msil stands for microsoft intermediate language or it can be simply says intermediate language which is il so il or msil both the names are same today they are also called as 
common intermediate language which is CIL now the meaning is that common intermediate language because if you are compiling the code of C sharp or maybe J sharp or VB in between we are having the same level which is of intermediate language so simply you can say IL MSIL or CIL or in the Java you say byte code all are the same names simply the thing is that if I am writing the code in the C sharp that is first compiled and converted to the intermediate language so that is the first part so means first compilation process is done and we know that every language is having their own compiler and yes this intermediate language also contain the metadata metadata means data about data let's say you have taken some text boxes in the text boxes you are having their properties as well let's say text box dot text text box dot font or the style so that is called the metadata so this whole is called the intermediate language so this whole process is called the compiler time that means it is the compile time process where the compilation is going on now i have compared this with the c in the c we know that the source code is directly converted to the native code so this source code converted to the native code there is no intermediate language so that means in your dotnet in java intermediate language is there so what is the purpose of that the purpose of intermediate language is that this intermediate language is very much secure now if i can provide this intermediate language to anyone they cannot change my code now let's see if i assume I have developed the application now this is my application and the source code is available let's say if you talk about the C and we are having some client server machine now if this is my client let's say this is the client and this is the server now on the server I have designed the source code if in the C programming I am giving my project to the client client can easily change it because I am providing the source code in between but i want that i should provide some of the code that client should not change so i am converting this source code to the intermediate language and this intermediate language i am pass oning to the client now this is the first step of the compilation so i can say that this intermediate language or the bytecode of java these are very much secure nobody can read this not the user not the operating system so that i can pass on this code to any of the person so this is the byte code or the intermediate language if you talk about the dotnet here we are having the intermediate language if you talk about java it is the byte code so names are different the purpose is same now this intermediate language or the msil or the cil they are called the managed code as well managed code because they are very much managed they know how much space they require they are very secure all the libraries are included that's why this code is also called the managed code so there are two terms which are emerging one is the managed code and one is the unmanaged code whenever you are converting your source code directly to the machine code this is called the unmanaged code because there is no management in between we are not talking about any security or anything else code will directly run on the operating system just like if you talk about c vb so they are working on the unmanaged code now we talk about the managed code whenever you are converting your source code to the intermediate code intermediate code means just like we are having the intermediate language here so this is called the managed code now managed code contain a code which nobody can understand and this is very secure and it is having all the information and the metadata so this is called the managed code now what happened now this code let's say i am providing to my friend or maybe i am providing to the client now in the client there are some class loaders available so here after the intermediate language class loaders are there that loads this managed code into the system afterward there is a concept called clr which is common language runtime so here you can see that 
we are having the next step of the compilation where we are having the JIT compiler, just in time compiler. So, this just in time compiler is the part of CLR. So, here now, second process is totally taken care by the CLR here means from IL to native code conversion that is done using the JIT compiler and under the observation of CLR. That's why we usually say this intermediate language run on the CLR. So here this JIT compiler convert the intermediate language to the native code or the machine code and we know that this machine code executed directly by the CPU. So with the help of this operating system, the CPU directly run this code. So there are multiple levels in the execution process. So if you talk about the levels here, so on the very first stage, we are having the source code. That means we have designed an application into the source code, maybe C sharp, J sharp, anything. Now afterward, they are compiled. So there is a second level here that is the compiler. So the compiler will be coming and these compilers are going to compile the code. And afterward, we are having the byte code or the intermediate language. So this is the intermediate language. That is the third thing which come. Now this intermediate language is then loaded. So who load that? There is a concept of class loader. So class loader load that intermediate language onto the system and this class loader use the libraries. So here in the second step of compilation, we are having the libraries and the class loader. Now why this class loader and libraries are required? You should understand that if I am providing the intermediate language to the client, now here this client will be having some kind of loader and the libraries so that it can work with the intermediate language. So after the IL is created or the managed code is created, class loader and libraries come into picture. And afterward, there is a next step which is the JIT compiler. So just in time compiler comes here and afterward it just convert to the native code or the machine code. So next we are having is the native machine code and this now run on the operating system. So this is how the complete execution process is going on and CLR is the main component who is taking care of all this thing. So in the execution process, if somebody asks you, you should understand that first we are having the source code. So in the source code, we are going to design the source. Let's say we are developing some application. Then afterward, the compiler will come. Compiler is going to compile that application and convert to the intermediate language. Now this intermediate language will be loaded on the system with the help of the class loader and class loader need the libraries also. So with the help of libraries, it just load them and then afterward there is a just in time compiler that again convert to the native code and this native code run on the operating system. So this is how the execution of .NET application go on. So this is called the execution process of .NET application.